Welcome to the Double J Podcast presented by Lake Central Media. This is our last podcast of the 2018 season, and man, it's been a great 2018 year. We're going to f- reflect on that later in the show, but right now, we're going to go on our weekend top takeaways. Giovanni, take it away. Well, uh, I'd like to welcome everyone into the show, and I'm going to start off with something that may or may not be just a tad bit biased, but Dak Prescott is just an okay quarterback in my opinion. He's not bad. I'm not saying that. But and yes, he's a good starter in the NFL, and the Cowboys are probably going to give him money, or give him his money because, uh, quite frankly, in my opinion, he does deserve it. And Jerry's world, Jerry's world. But <laughs> look at the team he had his rookie year, and how good he was thanks to everyone around him. He had the best offensive line in football. He had Ezekiel Elliott rookie his rookie year. year. Yep. That's Bryant. He still had Des Bryant back then. Jason Witten, an, an Jason, older Jason Witten. Yeah, no, but still a good Jason Witten. Uh, Jason Witten was not bad. Last year, he didn't have the same team, and the team started to figure him out. The Cowboys didn't make the playoffs this year, and this week, the Col- the Indianapolis Colts just completely exposed the Cowboys. If you shut down Zeke Elliott and completely eliminate Amari Cooper, he's Dak Prescott's not going to win games for you. Yeah, um, I texted you that actually after the Colts game. I told you Dak Prescott is only as hyped as he is because of Ezekiel Elliott. And you wonder where Dak Prescott would be without Zeke Elliott. But, yeah, I don't think he deserves the money. Uh, maybe uh, uh, not that much. Maybe maybe in the middle. But I put 2010 for me. Um, some of you guys know why I put that. Some of you might not know why. I know why. Um, um, 2010 was the last time the Bears won the NFC North with a quarterback with the name of Jay Cutler. Guys, Lance Briggs, Erlacher, Matt Forte. Um, you can't even. Um, but... It was one of the greatest moments this year for me, watching the Bears win their division against the Packers, who have owned us the last eight years. It was just great to see. Um, This was one of the complete games from the team we've seen this year. Trubisky did a great job after coming off one of his worst performances in his career. The defense stepped up. Um, If you guys want to know some news on Eddie Jackson, he is doing okay. He's just on a walking boot right now. It's just a little ankle sprain he'll be I'm I'm probable he will not play this week you know uh, rest him for the playoffs but he will be in the playoffs Kyle Long should be coming back soon too because um he's been out since like week four so he should be back by off the IR uh Bryce Callahan is out for the year and Aaron Lynch is dealing with an elbow injury but I don't think that's life or season ending at all but yeah it was a great game special teams was great too um I get O'Donnell the punter give him a lot of credit for um those inside the five punts he had um Congrats Eddie Jackson for breaking Aaron Rodgers' streak um, of most um, passes without interception. But, yeah, we're going to go right there. The Bears clinch the NFC North first first time in eight years. And, you know, they were picked last. Um, I'll go to Colin Cowherd of one of my sources. 5-11. and 5-11. and 11 Picked last. And everyone picked them last. And this is the um, – there's it's been, what, 13 out of the last 14 years a team has gone from last to first in their division. Something like that. It's something like that. And, you know, Eagles are the last year, which is, you know, good. Something good to bank off of. But, you know, I'm glad the Bears did what they did. Um, They played great. This game kind of showed me that, you know, they were tied 14-all. You're like, uh, uh, here comes Rodgers. But I think what showed me is that they evolved from that first game. They really evolved from that game because – the defense stepped up, and Cleo Mack had a sack with his back, and Leonard Floyd stepped up huge, the second-year player. You know, so it was a great thing to see as a Bears fan Sunday. And I just want to say this. So I've said it the last few weeks. I was wrong about the Bears. I was dead wrong about the Bears before the season. I thought Jack was insane for saying they would be at this point. I don't even think a lot of Bears fans would think that they would be 10-4. and four. They would have the NFC North clinched at this point. They now have a home playoff game. And to be honest, I did not think Mitchell Trubisky had this in him. Last year, I just didn't see a lot from Mitchell Trubisky. I didn't understand why Bears fans saw so much in him. Last year, he had seven touchdowns and seven picks as a rookie. I did not see him having this much of a breakout season. And you say that, it's because of the coaching. John Fox is not a coach you want with a young quarterback. He is a terrible coach for a young quarterback. He was coached for the Broncos with who? Peyton Manning, who was old. Matt Nagy, Cam, coming from... Um, Andy Reid's uh, family tree, and you see what Andy Reid's doing with uh, Mahomes. Look what Nagy's doing with Trubisky. Trubisky's done a tremendous job, and people say, oh, well, they didn't take him. They took him over Watson and Mahomes. I'm fine with that. 
Trubisky is more of a Chicago guy. Uh, he fits with our system, and he's improving and improving. And I said this to one of my friends. I bet you Trubisky is a top five NFL quarterback in five years. I give him five years to be up. Five years. Five years. This is year one of the offense. Imagine, you know, they don't really have anyone to rely on. Like, you know, like an Antonio Brown, a DeAndre Hopkins. A, I'll give Tyree Kill some props. You know, you can rely on him. Allen Robinson isn't really a guy you rely on that much. You know, Jordan Howard, eh, Tariq Cohen has definitely been probably, in my mind, if you have like an MVP for the Bears, like the third in that race. Uh, Jack, one, did you list Michael Thomas in that list? I don't, I'm fed up with Michael Thomas. Yeah, yeah, I was going to ask if that was a little bit um, bitter on your part. A little bit, but yeah, you try to compare Trubisky to a lot of quarterbacks, and you got and the quarterbacks they try to compare him to have to, uh, receivers like Thomas, Thielen, Diggs, um, Brown, Hopkins. I can keep going on, but I'm not trying to use that excuse. But I was great. It was it was nice to see Trubisky come off his worst performance ever. You know, he doesn't have social media. He quit. Um, and you see, in the uh, summer before he went to training camp, he quit social media and. You know, I think it's kind of going good for him right now. And, I mean, he obviously hurt here is what people say about him. I mean, when you get interviewed, they're going to keep saying it to him. You know, and I feel like he's done a great job. He's young. And he just came off his first ever injury in the NFL. I give him props for that. You know, you ask, are they going to bench him? They're not. Because he need, they have two road games. You go to San Francisco, who just beat the Seahawks, which is a good win. Then you go to Minnesota. You're definitely going to play Trubisky those next two games. We don't know if the Bears can get that first round by. I mean, they have, I mean, like a 10% chance, I think so. It's, it, they have the tiebreaker over the Rams and Saints for and, some reason. And the crazy thing is that they play the Minnesota Vikings week 17. There's a good chance they, they're going to play them at they Minnesota. Could not, they could knock them off. If they, you know. This is true, but there's a good chance that they could play Minnesota at Minnesota. And then the next week, Minnesota comes to Chicago. I would hate that, you know, just to watch that. But, yeah. That would mean they played three. they would have to play three times this year. Yeah. And it'll be interesting to see that third game. You play them twice, and you see how that goes. Major pops, you know, like I said, you really want to see Trubisky grow on the road. The Bears, you know, we can both agree the Bears have not been a pretty road team. The Giants game, I mean, Daniels quarterback. You go to Miami game, then you go to the Green Bay game. So, to see this team grow is great. And next is a thing maybe that stopped growing is the Brady. And I'll, we put just Brady era, but we can just put the Brady and Belichick era. I mean, Losing to the Steelers in a close game. A lot of people thought the Steelers were done after losing two, I mean, against the um, Raiders. My bad. Boswell missed a field goal. Everyone's like, oh, that's the Patriots. Here comes Tom Brady. Two minutes left. He's going to tie this game. And the Steelers' defense actually stops him. Is this the end of Tom Brady's era? To me, Tom Brady, I know Max Kellerman has said it for the, like, it seems like he an eternity. He not a top-10 quarterback this year. I think that's ridiculous, but... Right now, I don't think Tom Brady's top five quarterback. I think one thing that kind of... In terms of stats, no. One thing that shows it was that one throw to Joe Hayden and he picked off. That was just terrible. Brady was trying to throw it out of bounds, but... That, that's just like um. What was that? That's just like a Blake Bortles throw right there. Listen, he, and he is 17th. He is 17th in completion percentage. And, yeah. He's only 10th in touchdowns thrown. And, and he's, he's not even an MVP candidate. When was the last time Tom Brady wasn't an MVP and candidate? And I feel like he's got a better offense than lately. Gordon, Edelman, Gronk, Sony Michelle's back from Georgia. James White. I think James White is hurt, my bad. But he's kind of got a better offense than he usually has, and productivity's not there. They do have two easy games left, Bills and Jets. Must wins now. Well, yeah. I mean, if they want to get that second spot from the Texans, you got to win. And we're going to talk about the Steelers, actually. Are they a threat now after beating the Patriots? And we asked this question. They go to New Orleans this week to face off against the Saints. Are they a threat, the Steelers, now after this big win against Tom Brady? One thing about the Steelers that's always bothered me is that for some reason, whenever you place expectations on them, when you say, oh, they're definitely a contender in the AFC, they just... They just come out so flat against the Raiders. Who thought they were going to lose to the Raiders? First week of the season, the Browns. They tied the Browns. Yeah, that, that. I'm just saying they've had performances this year that are, are either great. Remember, against the the LA Chargers, they were, they were I, in they got, control they of that got, game. They got screwed of that game. They got screwed. 
but they still lost that game. They didn't. And then this week they beat New England. It wouldn't shock me this week if they went to New Orleans and just got completely outclassed by them. You know, I was rooting for the Panthers yesterday. Did not go good for me. I was hoping they beat the Steelers, but I am rooting for the uh, Saints. I mean, I am rooting for the Steelers in, uh, this week. I really think they're a good football team, and maybe this had you know they had a rough patch. I think they are a good football team. And another team that was in a rough patch are those Philadelphia Eagles. Carson Wentz with another big injury to add on to his list, and it's return of I don't even know how to name how do we how what, what nickname could we give this guy Nick Foles? What yeah? What nickname could we give Nick Foles? Uh, well, is he like the greatest backup of all time? At this point, it's hard to argue. I mean, he comes in, he goes to the Coliseum where everyone is saying, "Oh, LA is such a good home team." They were thirteen and a half underdogs. I'm pretty sure. They Colin Coward said they, they were going to blow them out. They whipped the Rams. The defense that is depleted in the secondaries. Nick Foles and Alshon Jeffrey, I have never – that connection was great. Adam, Smallwood, Clement – I mean, is it time that we just let Nick Foles play the rest of the year and Carson Wentz just sit, sit him down for the rest? I just want to say this. Carson Wentz is not coming back this year. Mm-mm. He has a, sh- a back fracture. Listen – I have had some back trouble in my life. Probably not nearly as bad as that. No, I don't think any of us has had that many back problems like that. I have, yeah, I have someone who actually has had back problems in their life. Oh, I don't know Jesus. if you knew this about me, Jack. Oh, jeez. And listen, I know how much it hurts to stand when your back hurts, but... Sometimes not, it hurts I'm, when it's not even a vertebrae. It just hurts in general. Just imagine Carson <laughs> Wentz trying to throw, trying to throw the football at this point. And and do that with six with five or some four or five guys trying to kill him. It's not happening. <laughs> mm-mm. Mm-mm. Yeah, Nick Foles is definitely gonna keep that. And we talk about the um, Rams. Is it possible the Bears ruin Jared Goff? Another terrible performance by Jared Goff. Did the Bears just ruin Jared Goff? <laughs> I do have to say this. One thing that I think people have forgotten, they lost Cooper Cup for the year a few weeks ago. They did. I believe he tore his ACL. That had a, lot, a larger of an impact than even I thought it would. Yeah, and I'm going to go with that too. I mean, geez. I just don't understand what's wrong with Jared Goff. It wasn't, he was in the MVP conversation about after that Kansas City game, I'm pretty sure. Yes, he was. And now it looks like he's looking like the Jared Goff from when he was being coached by Jeff Fisher. Oh, man, Jeff Fisher. I wonder what he's doing right now. Now we're going to go, you know, we're not going to have a show until the January 8th, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm not sure. The next, uh, That'll be right after the national championship It will game. be, and I'll be And the day after my birthday. Yeah, January 8th, and we're going to predict the um, playoffs. Giovanni, who do you, I want to see your NFC playoff picture first. Who do you got in the NFC? Well, I did this uh, in the ESPN NFL playoff machine predictor, and I predicted the next two weeks. And before I get to that, I do want to look at some of the significant matchups that got to this point. I'll start in the NFC. I do have the Eagles being the Texans this week. I don't. I can't see that. I can't. Nick Nick Foles. I, I believe in him. I don't know. I I don't know. It's tough. And then I think the Cowboys bounce back this week at home against the Buccaneers. I think the Vikings. Uh, pull it off against the Lions. I think that's going to be a close game. Is that Detroit? Is that Detroit? That is tough. That is a tough place to play. Even with all the struggles the Lions have had this year, I do have the Bears coming out on top against the 49ers, which That'll be a good game. is big. But unfortunately for the Bears, the, the Rams and Saints will, in my opinion, both win. The Saints. I think if the Bears want a chance at that first round by the Saints need to lose last night. Yes, yes, indeed. And then the big Sunday night matchup this week, Kansas City and Seattle. I pick Seattle. This is why. That's that's. Mm-hmm. The, and it sounds bold, but the but the games that Kansas, the big games Kansas City have played, the Los Angeles Chargers, the New Rams. England Patriots, the Rams. They all lost late in the game. They all lost them. for some reason. They, Mahomes. Well, they I, 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 I wouldn't blame Mahomes for the Chargers game. That was defense. The Rams game, he threw two. Yeah, the, awful the Rams, picks. the Rams was the Rams was his fault, but the Chargers was that was a defense right there. That was a defensive problem. And then we go to week seventeen. This could be a very interesting week. Again, I'm just sticking to the NFC for now. I do have the Vikings play beating the Bears in the last week. Now this that will is, be tough. This though. is only because I think the Vikings are going to have a lot more to play for than the Bears. I think at this point. Well, do you have the Eagles at what do you at nine and seven? 
That is correct. So if they, okay, so since you have the Eagles at 9-7, and seven, that would be a big game for the Vikings because if the Vikings would lose against the Bears, the Eagles would go over the, Bear, uh, the Vikings. So that was a big game. So I do think they will come out with a lot more energy. Saints-Panthers again. I do think the Saints will once again win. I, Sadly. The Panthers... They're Who knows Cam Newton happening. is just terrible man, this year. I, I can't stand Cam Newton right now. And then late late window, I I'm, have the Seahawks winning at home against the Cardinals and the Rams. I'm looking at your thing and you're fucking the NFC. Um, the Bengals over the Steelers at Heinz Field. How many times have we seen this? And listen, uh, I, I, know, I, I see Jack Spacer. I don't know, man. You, they, just, they beat the, the Patriots Steel- at Heinz Field, though. The Steelers played down to their competition so terribly. I, I, it wouldn't shock. Listen, I, I know that's bold. Jeff Driscoll is the quarterback for the Bengals. I know that's it's a very bold pick. That is, and too, that's a, and it's bold. and it's and it's one that in a week I would probably change. That is way bold. So let's see your AFC because you're very intrigued in that one. In the AFC. Week, I'm going to go back to week 16. I do have the Titans, Chargers, and Colts all winning this week. And I do have the Ravens losing, which is very significant. I think yeah, at LA, they aren't going to win. San Diego to me – wow, San Diego. The Los Angeles Chargers are the most complete team in the NFL. Well, their stadium's about to change their perspective after December 31st. Dignity Health Sports Park. I couldn't believe that when I read that at first, to be honest. For a second, I thought, wait, are they, like, changing stadiums? But no, it's just a name. No, it, the con- I think how it works is the contract ends. At how the do you beginning. think the LA Galaxy feel about that one? <laughs> well, well, well speaking, speak, well, I might get to that later. I mean, but the StubHub Center sounds Zlatan a lot Zlatan Ibrahimovic is coming back. I like that. I like his ponytail. <laughs> and then, so in the AFC, going back to the AFC, I, th- I do think New England wins out. I think they beat the Bills Yeah, they got home. the Bills. Yeah, I agree with that. And then I think that's it for all the significant matchups for week 16. Now week 17. It There's be- only one significant matchup in week 17 in the AFC picture. And that is Colts, and Colts Titans. Titans. I hey, think- the Colts will be on TV probably maybe. Oh, no, wait, Bears we'll games are on at 12 too. Never mind. <laughs> but we'll have to see. I think no. I think that could be moved to the Sunday night game. That could be very significant. That could. Who's Sunday night? Um, uh, that is not chosen until week 16. Sunday yeah, it could get moved there, actually. I, I, that, I, honestly, if that's moved to Sunday night, that's worse for the Colts in my mind. Night game, Titans home, clinching. I've went to the Bears game, man, clinching, home, night. It's a different atmosphere, especially in the, during the, what's it called, night and day. I'm telling you, Giovanni, it's something new. It will be interesting. And once and I do have the Texans winning Week 17, and that will clinch the division for them. I I can't say in my right mind that the Texans are going to lose out and lose to the Jags at home. No. It, at home, it's no. Not, it's not going to happen. Well, and I do think Kansas City clinches home field advantage by being the Raiders at home. I think that that will be a tough – that's no easy task. And then, once again, I do have New England winning out. They will win at home against the Jets. And the playoff picture will go like this, in my opinion. I think New England does get the second seed. I think Kansas City, the road to the – AFC champion or to to the Super Bowl will have to go through Kansas City at least in the AFC. And then on the wild card, Indianapolis will travel to Houston. And to be honest, I think the Colts that's the Colts can win this game. That's tough. You got Derrick Henry, who's like I don't even know. I think he's on steroids right now, honestly. Oh, and I did forget to mention I do have the Colts being the Titans in Week 17. That's Andrew the- Luck has owned them. In his career. I Honest, don't think year, anything has changed. This year has showed me that if you own a team, it's different. So I'm going to keep it simple. AFC, I've got the Chiefs at one. I've got the Patriots at two. I've got the Titans at that six seed. I, I'm not trying to like be uh, mean or anything. I'm just saying Sunday night football, if that is, or any if it's home. And what we've seen is this year, home teams have dominated. And, you know, Derrick Henry has been going off. He has been like the court. He's been. He, it's like college for him all of a sudden. <laughs> um, Marcus Mariota, uh, he's been quite. He's been uh, iffy. You know, he didn't get the. He played only in the first half against the Colts, so I'm sure he wants to get some vengeance on them. Corey Davis, a good receiver. Um, you know, I, Titans are a good home team. They did beat the Patriots at home. Don't forget. This so true. I'm gonna go with the Titans at six. I got Houston at three. Actually, I, I messed this up. My bad. The one seed is L.A. Chargers. I think they come out with that division. Two seed, New England, six seed, Tennessee, third seed, Houston. 
Um, fifth seed, Kansas City, and I got the Steelers winning the division. I don't see the Ravens winning it. I'll go to the NFC. Um, it's pretty simple for me. I've got the Saints at one. Sadly, the Rams at two. Bears at three. I've actually got the Eagles at six. I give the Eagles that um, nine and seven. I'd like to see the Eagles and Bears play. Two, of course the last will. two teams to go from worst to first and go against each other. That'd be a good game. Alshon Jeffrey comes back to Soldier Field. Maybe some revenge. Seattle, I got the five seed, and Dallas at that four seed. And honestly, I'm not really banking on Dallas to win that game, if we're being honest. So those are um, playoff pictures. By the time we come back, it will be wild card. The wild card games will be played already. So now we're going to switch it to college football. And those playoffs are starting in two weeks, December 29th. You got Notre Dame and Clemson in that Sugar Bowl, 3 o'clock, 4 p.m. Eastern. And you got Oklahoma and Alabama in that Orange Bowl right after. And Giovanni, I know I already know what you're going to say. Notre Dame and Clemson, the 2-3 and three team, both undefeated, both with young quarterbacks. Who do you got taking this Sugar Bowl? I've got Clemson. To me, Clemson just has better players than Notre Dame. I don't see a way that Notre Dame pulls this off, especially in the last few weeks of the regular season. They just – I don't want to explain this. They just didn't look like an elite team. Yes, they were winning games. But to me, they just didn't look like a team that could go, can take on Clemson. And then in the other game, Alabama versus Oklahoma, I think this is going to be a great game. But Alabama, again, they're just the better team in my opinion. You don't I think, you think Tua's knee will give out or ankle? No. No? So it's going to be Bama and Clemson in the national championship. I think Alabama wins again. Okay. Notre Dame and Clemson, I'm taking Notre Dame. Um, it's uh. a bias. I'm a huge Notre Dame fan, yes, but I do believe they can win this game. Ian Book is a better quarterback than Trevor Lawrence. Brian Kelly is the coach of the year, which we'll talk about actually right after this. Um, Notre Dame's got some big-time receivers. Miles Boykin, Chase Claypool, Chris Fink. Um, Dexter Williams, one of the best running backs in the country, and this defense is not going away. Julian Love, which is one of the best uh, defense backs in the um, country. You've got Tillery, who is one of the best defensive tackles. Trent Quill, who's been battling a lot of injuries, but he's he's a gutsy dude. I'll give him credit for that. Houston Griffin, a freshman who's been stepping up for them. I got I seen Notre Dame winning this one. I'm seeing a lot. I'm seeing them coming out with a with the uh, with a message that don't take us lightly. And then I got Alabama beating Oklahoma. Um, you know, I really love Kyler Murray. Props and winning Heisman, but Alabama's too strong. Alabama Notre Dame national championship. I do not know where that is actually, but I am taking Notre Dame. Notre Dame is mad. They, you know, um, I listen to some of the interviews Brian Kelly gets at the podium, and it's all about what is this team from that time you got blown out from Alabama. You got blown out from oh it's at Levy Stadium. Okay, that's the the Notre Dame loves. Cali. They love the California. <laughs> they do. They went to uh, the Coliseum and won, and they went to the old um, San Diego, um, old Charger Stadium and beat Navy. But I got to take Notre Dame all the way. Um, I think they're mad about what happened in 2012 against Alabama. I think people, they're annoyed that people keep bringing that up about them. I think they're annoyed, and they just want to rewrite. six years. Yeah, they want to rewrite history. And we said it. Brian Kelly is the AP Coach of the Year. Um I think he is the second guy to win it multiple times. I'm not 100% sure. Um, props to him. If you don't remember, this team was 4-8 and eight two years ago. And, you know, you know, you didn't really see anyone decommit from there. And they all stayed. And they all trusted it. And you and you got to – I give him props. I am not – I'm not a big Brian Kelly fan. I think you know that, Giovanni. I have not spoken – I'm not a big fan of him. But I will give him credit for the move he did replacing um, Brandon Winbush for Ian Book. One of the best moves of all – this defense was a joke when they were 4-8 and eight two years ago. They have brought in a great coordinators. Chip Long, I give credit to. There's so many guys on this Notre Dame staff that really deserve it. But Brian Kelly, congrats to you. And also what Brian Kelly is talking about, he thinks it's time for an 18 playoff in Giovanni. It certainly is. What are your thoughts on an 18 playoff? All right. I think it's time for an 18 playoff. I just don't understand how a team that goes undefeated for two straight years, no. you can say who no. they play all you no. want. Yes, Jack, I know. They don't play anyone good. They don't good. deserve it. They don't. UCF does not deserve to be in a playoff game. They this they rejected to play Florida this year. <laughs> they rejected to play Florida this year. So don't come at me with the, they can't play anyone. They rejected to play Florida. I'd like to point out Notre Dame doesn't even play in a conference. Hey, still a better schedule, right? 
I saw, I saw someone say that the other day, and I couldn't stop laughing. Still about a better schedule, right? Is this true? Notre Dame, Stanford, Florida State, even though they were, I don't know why they're bad. Syracuse, Notre Dame has one of the best schedules in the country. I think it's time, but I think it's time for the eight best teams. Not if you want a conference, you deserve it. Eight best teams, UCF, you're not one of the eight best teams in my mind. I think, I honestly think Kentucky can beat them. They're going to get squashed by LSU in the um, bowl game. Isn't that what everyone said would happen to them against Auburn last year? That's last year. It's a new year. Yeah, they're done. Uh, UCF is going to fall apart. They're going to lose probably like 30-7. to seven. I don't see them winning at all. I, and I, if they win again, they will be back-to-back and if they win, it, And if they win it again, then I hope they actually schedule some people to actually prove that they're actually something. Because <laughs> they don't play anyone. I mean, if, you, if you're banking your best win off of Cincinnati and Memphis, you need to go do your schedule or something because that's just terrible. NBA, um, biggest, you know, I like this one. Um... <laughs> Um, the Lakers played the um, Hornets this past week. And Lonzo Ball and LeBron James were the first Lakers to get a triple-double on the same team since Magic and Kareem. I'll start with this one. I am, I'm glad to say this. Lonzo Ball <sighs> finally gets the recognition he deserves. He's one of the best, smartest basketball players in the NBA. He is an elite defender. Yes, he can't really shoot, but he is a playmaker. And LeBron James said he he sees a little bit of himself in Lonzo Ball. He also had a dunk and stared down the camera pretty pretty mean. So I give props to Lonzo Ball and the Lakers. You guys are I am I'm you know if I got to root for another team besides the Bulls, it's the Lakers. I'm a huge Lonzo Ball fan. You know, great to see him get a triple double. I mean, it's nice to see him score more than ten points on that triple double. Not the best shooter, but you know. He got 10, point, 10 rebounds, I think, 11 assists, something like that. Lakers team is obviously balling out right now, so watch out for them. I think my biggest takeaway from the last uh, few weeks watching the Lakers, they finally found who the second best player on this team is. It's not Brandon Ingram. To me, I haven't heard Lon- about Ingram in a long time. To me, time. it's not Lonzo Ball. It's Kyle Kuzma. I think that's a fair argument to it's make. Fair. It is. He's a good shooter. He's been scoring about 20 points a game. That's fair. Now, I think LeBron and Lonzo Ball play better together. Better they connection. Both, they both have a very similar playing playing style. They both They're try smart. to get their, They're smart. That's they why. both try to get their teammates involved. That's right. Another thing is, why are the Nuggets good? They beat the Raptors this past week. And they beat the Warriors. And they beat the Thunder. Why are they good? They, they don't have their first-round draft pick. They don't. They lost Gary Harris. I'm pretty sure they're missing three of their five starters. Because Why of are they good? I, uh, Jokic, yes, he's there, but you're missing. Millsap just got hurt too, and you're the best team in the West, and you're missing three of your five starters. It's unbelievable. Again, I think this team it can win a playoff series. Mile high, man. Mile high. And next for other than the NBA is fact or fiction, and we kind of. Um, talked about this. Um, will the Chiefs win a division over the charge? Will the Chargers? My bad. Will the Chargers win a division over the Kansas City Chiefs? That is a fact. I think it's going to happen. I don't think there's a more complete team in the NFL than the Chargers. I've, I've been saying, saying that for the I, last five weeks. <laughs> I, did, I never disagreed with I've you. I've been saying that, but I think now they've proven it. Fact. Philip Rivers wins MVP. Fact. Whoa! Ooh. That's bold. It, it is very bold. I don't think it's – I don't – That is bold. I don't think in my mind it's not going to happen. That's bold. But I think he, he, he legitimately deserves to be a candidate. Oh, no, he is a candidate. Um, I got to say fiction. I think it's going to go Drew Brees. I, I think Drew Brees, his team is going to go probably 14-2 and two this year. I give it to him. Matt, Matt Nagy, coach of the year. Uh, I, how much longer can I argue this fact? I think it's a fact. Uh, he's the first – Coach since Papa Bear George Hallis to make the winning division in his first year. That's 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 a big name right there to follow. And speaking of Chicago teams, will the Bulls trade Jabari Parker? Yeah, I think it's time. Um, obviously he's not playing the way he wants to. If you're benching him, trade him maybe for draft picks or I don't know something. But how much can you really get out of him at this point? That's my thing. You trade him before you he get he's worse. <laughs> He's not even in the rotation anymore, Jack. That's exactly. You trade him before it gets worse. <laughs> Saquon Barkley wins rookie offensive rookie of the year. Absolutely. Sadly, I gotta say fact, you know, I I was really hoping Baker Mayfield could. I'm a huge Baker Mayfield guy, if none of you guys knew. I I 
I kept Jov- I kept Hunter Giovanni a month before the NFL draft. He'd be the first pick, and he was. But yeah, Saquon Barkley's been an absolute freak. Barry Sanders says he sees a lot of himself in the Saquon Barkley. It's a lot. <laughs> Manny Machado will he be a White Sox? And for you know, we're gonna bring this up. I, I just want to explain why we think this, Giovanni. Yonder Alonso was traded for Alex Call. He's traded to the Chicago White Sox. Now, who is Yonder Alonso? He's an all-star first baseman. No, we don't care about that. He's I think Manny Machado's co- his brother-in-law. brother-in-law. He is Manny Machado's brother-in-law, and they have lived close in Miami, actually, in the offseason. And Manny Machado went to a guaranteed rate uh, Monday. Uh, there was a picture of him and his wife. I'm not sure if Yonder Alonso was at the meeting. I'm sure he's obviously talking to Machado. But, you know, when you see um, your uh, brother-in-law, I'm, I'm sure it's going to – and then, you know, your wife's brother, I'm sure it's going to, you know, kind of persuade Machado. Um, Sox can give him a lot of money. You know, they're also trying to get Bryce Harper, so it'll be interesting to see how they play out the money because I'm, not, I'm being honest right now. I don't want them to spend all their money on Machado and Harper. They need some pitching as well. They do. They need some bullpen support. Yeah. So get one. I do prefer Bryce Harper because we kind of discovered of Avi Garcia. We do have Jake Berger coming from the um, uh, minors, but Man. you know, um, you know, Manny Machado would be a great fit for the Sox. I'm, I don't think he'd get a max, honestly. I think they maybe come to him and say, "Hey, we're going to probably get Bryce Harper too. If you want to play with this team, that's going to be a, if you join, we're going to probably win a division. Then you got to take maybe less than a max. But I think he will be a White Sox. I think Yonder Alonso being a brother-in-law and seeing you know them be a huge on um, what's it called favorite. For Bryce Harper and Machado's like, wow, me and Bryce Harper on the same team. Imagine that. Just imagine. And moving on to the world. Now here goes Giovanni's uh, cloud nine time. Soccer, UCLA, UC. Wow, UC. UEFA Champions League round of sixteen drawings. Um, and, I, and it's interesting actually. Some good matchups. Uh, to me, the best matchup is by far Atletico Madrid versus Juventus. That's Cristiano Ronaldo going up against a team that yeah. he knows very well, Atletico Madrid. This, yeah. And we'll get to Manchester United in just a minute, but it's Man United versus PSG. PSG is going to win that. Uh, certainly not the matchup that us Manchester United fans For you want. Um, United States soccer fans, Dorman, Polistic, well, Pol- I can't even say his last name. Polistic. Polistic plays, um, how do you say it? T- Tottenham. Tottenham. I mean, you know, keep an eye on him. That'd be nice to see. Barcelona plays Lyon. Yeah, I mean, I think we know who's going to win that one. And then Rio Madrid got, of course, Ajax. Ajax. And then I think the best one, Liverpool Bayern. It might be a matter of who concedes less goals. I think you know, that can one, be an absolute shootout between two legs. Only thing I know is Bayern owns Germany. They own Germany. <laughs> it's basically well, the it's basically the German national team almost. Well, I would like to say this: uh, if Bi- Bayern basically, this is the only thing left they can win because Dortmund are first in the, uh, the Bundesliga, which is and- surprising. And I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. Liverpool has been hot. And we talked about Manchester playing PSG. Well, they just fired their manager, Giovanni. And getting to that, finally, it's been a long time coming. Jose Mourinho has been sacked from Manchester United. To sacked. Me, that is Interesting. That is, that is the term used for firing. Really? Sacked? Yes. Um, this morning I woke up to this. And yeah, I, I, to be I, honest, I shouldn't have been did. shocked, but it was time for someone to go. You know, they've given up 28 goals this year. At this point of the year, last year they had only given up 29. I saw a stat when their um, coach from 2013 retired. I'm not sure on it. I forgot his name. Sir Alex Ferguson. When he retired, this um, club just went downhill, and they couldn't really find anything. It it really has just gone all downhill from there. And someone I want to see them bring in is Zidane Zidane. Listen, Manchester United has a lot of Spanish and French players. He's this manager is very respected. I think he's gonna he would bring the best out of his players. And United still have trophies to play for. They still have the FA Cup and they still have the Champions League. Now the drawing didn't exactly go in their favor. No, no, not even close. And top four in the Premier League is starting to become more and more and less likely, let alone winning the Premier League. That's insane. They are nineteen points behind Liverpool. They just lost to them through one. I was about to say it's Liverpool, over. Liverpool has been hot. Is that all, Giovanni? All the soccer? Well, uh, just do, doing a little year recap of soccer. Um, this past Sunday, my team, Club America, are Liga Mekis champions. We mentioned last week Atlanta United won the MLS Cup. 
Yeah. And in, in La Liga this past year, Barcelona won, EPL, Man City won, and Barcelona and Man City both have a chance to repeat. And in the Champions League, Real Madrid back to back to back champions. That is insane. That rarely that is. ever happens. And now the Double J list. It is our last podcast of the 2018 year. So we are going to reflect on the best sports moments of 2018. And Giovanni, go from five, four, three, two, one. So I want to hear your fifth. So this is in no particular order. I don't think that it has is... to be in order. You got to put in order. That's just fair. This is you got to put in order. It cannot be. You got well, to. You have to. Come right. on. So it's on the script. We put top five, top five greatest sports moments of the year. I'm just going to put the moments of the year that stood out to me. Uh, fifth, I just put J.R. Smith. J.R. Smith. So if you don't know what happened, you thought that was great. Wow. <laughs> no, I didn't. Think, I just thought it was significant because J.R. Smith. So I'm sure everyone watching this probably knows what happened at this point. But if you don't, J.R. Smith got got it the rebound. It was George Hill's fault. I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna say that George Hill's fault. Anyway, um, J.R. Smith gets the rebound. The Cavs are, at this point are tied with the Warriors. Now J.R. Smith, for some reason, for some reason he thought they were up. So he decides to take it all the way to the corner to try and waste time, I guess, in his mind. And thus so is born the infamous meme of LeBron James just getting so angry. I think all those tattoos got in the way. He has like 35,000 tattoos. You know that, right? That is true. Jack, please explain to me how this has anything to do with George Hill. I know George Hill had he a shot. He missed the free throw. That's his fault. You got to make those free throws. This is true, but... You have to make your free throw. That's the easiest. That's the second easiest point you can get. And what's funny is I think the commentators even said right before, "Well, Jr. Smith is such a great free throw shooter." And I knew he was gonna miss too. Every time, well, like in the NFL when it's they the say ball. he has not missed inside of forty since this year, of course he misses exactly. inside of forty. It's George Hill's fault. I blame it. So what's number four? This one's more of a personal one for me. Mexico upsets Germany in the group stage of the World I was Cup. I'm watching that. And Germany eventually did not make it out of the group stage. This moment, I know a lot of Mexico fans said that, that they. <laughs> not only that, a lot of fans were crying. Uh, I remember when I first told my dad that me and me and my dad were watching this game together. He said, "Oh my gosh, that is ridiculous." But to me, a lot of Mexico fans like myself have waited for this moment for waited for this moment for so long, and you know it's kind of bittersweet to look back on because the same thing happened. The curse, El Quinto Partel, the fifth game. Mexico failed to get to the fifth game, the quarterfinal again. It has been so long since this team mm-hmm. has gotten to the fifth game. But to me, Chucky Lozano's goal, it's its probably the most important goal in Mexico history because they were, I think the odds were plus 620 for, for Mexico. Some big money winners right there if you bet on them. And then number three, Bama wins the national title in overtime. I know a lot of fans uh, like Jack did not like this moment, but no. it was insane. It was absolutely insane. And what a sport Jalen Hurts is. What a sport he is! I I think that's I think that's a great story. He um graduated, uh, this past week. This is true. And then number two, uh, UMBC. Does it, does it, that was does it, awesome. Does anyone know what that stands for? I'm gonna. I, I'm just saying that was awesome. I was watching that game. And I was so happy. Upsets number one seed Virginia. Thank you for doing that. Thank you. Wow, this was insane, Jack. Imagine if they beat Kansas State in the next game. They would have been in the uh, sweet 16. And this is significant because a 16 seed, never, in case you don't know, they've never been a one seed ever. This is the first time it's ever happened. And the crazy thing is, if it was going to happen, I expect it to be some crazy buzzer beater, some crazy half-court shot. No, UMBC dominated this game. Yeah, they did. If you remember. They did. And then number one, this was tough to pick from, the Minneapolis Miracle. If you don't remember, Case Keenum. Throws it, throws it to the sideline to Stefan Diggs. I bet, I bet they wish they had him still. Yeah, absolutely insane. <laughs> Stefan Diggs runs in for a touchdown. That was pretty. Jack, big. do you remember that? I do. I was watching it. That was one of the coolest moments I've seen. Me? Okay. Wow. Number five. The Bears win the NFC North. I have to say, it, it's something that hasn't happened eight years, and when something ha- doesn't happen eight years, it's a top moment. So Bears win the NFC North is my number five. Number four, the Minneapolis Miracle. I put that in number four. I, I have a lot, I have something valued over it. I mean, that was crazy. Yeah. Number three, um, UMBC upsets number one Virginia. Um, you know, 
a lot of people write off that team, wrote off that team, I should say. Um, and to see them, you know, not care what the haters say and win that game, that's just, that's great. I mean. Shocking. It, it is shocking. <laughs> Number two, this is, um, this going to be shocking. This is, this is another shocking one. Um, I think this was all in the, the Khabib and McGregor fight was the second greatest moment this year. Just off what everything that happened was awesome. McGregor taps out. Khabib starts a fight in the crowd. It was WWE Part Two. I think that was the second greatest moment for me. I think I, the UFC would disagree with you just because of I how know. awful that looks for the sport. That's it, it does. Why I and I, I'm sorry, that. UFC, for that. I, I don't mean to offend all you guys, but you know. Jack, what's your number one? <laughs> I thought about this actually. I sat, you know, I was actually driving to school. I thought, you know, 2018 was um. How do I say this? It was an interesting year. It was, it was you know, um, a In lot sports. of, you know, not a lot of good for me because, you know, the White Sox are pretty, you know, they're pretty bad. <laughs> um, That's the, putting it nicely. The Bears, I mean, last year they weren't good. <laughs> the Bulls, no. Notre Dame wasn't that good. Georgetown, not that good. Um, Number one, yeah, this, this might come a shock to you listeners, but I think Baker Mayfield being picked number one is my greatest moment this year. And it, and it has a backstory. And it has a backstory of why. It does. It, I can't confirm this. Deck's not crazy. Um, You know, he was a walk-on at Texas Tech. And he left to go to Oklahoma. But he's the first Heisman to be a walk-on. And everybody writes this kid off. You know, he's the next Johnny Manziel. He's too small. He's too short. You know, he's just another Johnny Manziel. And for him to just to be the number one pick and actually him playing good football, I think that's one of my favorite moments. For a guy who was not who was written off by everyone besides his family, uh, to go and be a number one pick and to play in the NFL and be good, I think that's what makes that such a great moment. That that is an incredible. Story. I had a lot of other things. I had Notre Dame making the playoffs, but I didn't feel like that was prestigious. I do have one more thing just to say to be funny. Vontae Davis retires at halftime. I actually had, if we had like a top 10, but I want to do top five, I was going to say Tom Brady dropping that pass in the Super Bowl. That was going to be one of mine. That was pretty significant. I, that was. <laughs> but, yeah, um, you know, maybe you guys disagree with my moments, but I like to go on backstories of how it happened, you know. I definitely had some bi- – Mexico – the Mexico yeah, one was most and it's a backstory like you were talking about. Exactly. And for me, Baker Mayfield, I'm huge – you know I'm a huge Baker Mayfield guy, and to see him rise up. It's great. You know, I'd like to thank all you guys for tuning into these, you know, first eight, I want to say, podcasts. This is our eighth episode. We of the, um, thank you enough. 2018 season. Um, we're going to hopefully bring in some new stuff 2019 season. Always go follow our Twitter at Double J Podcast. Go listen to us on Spotify, Apple Music, Music Anchor, Pocket Cast, Google Podcasts. Oh, man, we got a lot. We'd like to thank you all for tuning in, giving us your feedback for this 2018 season. Like, again, thank you all for listening. This is the Double J Podcast presented by Lake Central Media. Have a nice day, everyone.